All right, switching over to the main board. He's the bassist and he's the singer from yeah. one of the hottest bands around. <laughs> of course, I'm talking Jarvis Leatherby from Night Demon. How you doing, dude? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. I want to make sure you're able to hear me because okay, I know okay. you're you're calling from far away and we're talking the case on the phone and I'm surprised yeah. SSU is still paying for... Uh, I'm trying my best here. I know. I, we're trying our best here too. You know, We're surprised we're still you know having phone connection. The school pays for our, uh, our dial-up. <laughs> you know, but anyway, Jarvis... It's great to hear from you, and right now I feel like, I kind of feel like a jerk for asking you to call in, because you should be resting. You've been busy this whole year. I mean, from the start of 2016, it's just been no slowing down for the night demon. You guys have been touring constantly with different acts, and uh, soon you're about to embark on another little mini tour with uh, Anvil, so it's just, it's just you're yeah, constantly going. I mean, you, gotta, you gotta work, you know, you gotta eat. <laughs> that, that's true, well yes, so. you do. No, we've been at it for a while, yeah. But um, but yeah, the Anvil tour is cool. It's just it's just West Coast. We're just doing that next week. We will be coming up to your area to the DNA Lounge up there in San Fran. Um, from that, we go straight to Europe for about five weeks, and then from that, we go straight to the Carcass tour in the states. So, I mean, that's that's sure. a lot of stuff but, coming uh, the way. Yeah, you know, what else is new, right? <laughs> I know. It's like what else is you and Night Demon? You guys are always doing something, but it seems that. Every time you're doing something or you're touring, uh, what I've noticed over the years is that you're getting on, you know, tours of some bands. I remember the Raven; that was a big deal when you guys went across the United States right. with Raven. And then just this year alone, I was going to quickly bring up that you played with Manila Road and Satan. You did a little, you know short yeah. runs, and uh, two two iconic bands right there. And then you know you're touring around with them, and I saw you with Satan. And I was just blown away by how the stage presence of Night Demon has evolved. You know, I remember when I first saw you guys in San Francisco, you know, you had the old banner, the first album had yet to drop, and, you know, you didn't have the lighting. You had the fog machine, but you didn't have, you know, the lighting. And then just to, just to see where it's gone, I mean, you guys have really taken this in a very serious and professional manner, you know, or I can tell this is something you really are dedicated to. Am I right for that? Well, saying that? I think, well, absolutely. Well, that's without question. But I think, I think it's just an evolution, you know, how you evolve as, with your presentation and your performance as a band, you know, it's just over time. If you, if you keep trying to push the envelope, you get to the things, you know, I can't wait to see what it's going to look like in five years, you know, but, uh, um, you know, and, and I don't know, we, you know, I don't think, you know, we don't, we don't want to get, to, we don't want to be a guar or anything like that. You know, we are touring with Cool, though, and that's cool. Like, I, I love what they do, you know. But there's bands that are, that are just better at that stuff, you know. Uh, but I think, you know, like I said, it's just an evolution. And it's funny because a lot of other bands, a lot of reputable bands always hit me up and they're like, hey, you know, after we'll tour with them, they'll be like, hey, you know, what, so what kind of lighting do we need to buy? Or what kind of, you know. Yeah vision you need to have a vision for what you want and then try it out and keep every day when we talk about every night after every show you know you think you think a band that's that's eight months out of the year which is a big pile but it's really not you know like we're always making adjustments and uh, you know it's all trial and error we've we've tried tons of i would say just just oh shit you there i know you there yeah i can hear you you there yeah, I, I'm here. Hey, sorry. Okay, we tried. I'm, I, I was saying we tried a bunch of different production ideas on stage that just did not work. You know, they didn't they didn't look good, and they were just cheesy, or or you know, we we had the wrong kind of lighting, or we had some cheap stuff, or you know, the wrong kind of smoke machines, and, and all that stuff. So, yeah. But it's all about a, a really just want to kind of see put on the show that we want to see like we want to we want to put on a, that we would love a band you know so that's that's kind of where we're at with it yeah and we also brought up here the carcass the ghoul crowbar show and uh, i had no idea i was totally surprised by this when it was announced on your facebook i i couldn't believe it it was like the first time i had heard this information <clears throat> but uh 
We, I, you know, the diversity. I guess what, I have what to was bring it up. That, you, that shocked you about that. Oh, I mean, just the fact that you were able to get this diverse bill, and like I said, I, I wasn't like uh, at the Satan show. I somehow was given inside information. You know, I don't, I don't claim to have inside uh, information. Yeah. <laughs> if I, if I did, I'd be oh, a very yeah. wealthy man right now. You know, but uh, <laughs> if I had the inside information, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> but um, I was gonna say, th you have to bring up about that. It's the diversity, and I'm sure you can agree that when it comes to American metal shows. A lot of the promoters and a lot of people play it safe. They try to get everybody to sound the same. Where this, to me, really right. does kind of go all over the spectrum of metal. You know, it's not just here's Absolutely. a thrash bill, here's a death metal bill, and the fans are going to have to, you know, pick and choose. This is hey, we got a lot of stuff for here, you know, for people to get into. Absolutely, I could, I completely agree. You know, and in, in Europe, you know, we've been doing it for a while now. And that's it, it works out there. I mean, we're next month we're playing in Poland with you know, playing with Behemoth, that and that. But it works. You know, it's just, and you, know, you say like promoters playing it safe, right? I agree. They they do that and they do think that, but it's actually the least it's the least safest thing that they could do. Because they're pulling from the same audience, you know? You're gonna get the same people that are going to come to see death metal. It's the same guys. So if you get six death metal bands, it's just going to be the same guys. You know, it's good to mix them up and 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 expose different styles or different subgenres of metal to to other fans. You know, and I think this is a quality bill. I think between the four bands, I think we're all kind of you know the better bands at what we do. I think you know I'm, I'll be honest and say that. And I, and I think you know there's a lot of integrity there behind each of these bands. And I think as far as the other I mean, it's the top level of what it is as far as each band and its own subgenre. So I'm happy to go out there and represent it with you guys. And I wanted to quickly bring up, I do know you'll be playing in Sacramento. Was it just because you're playing in Sacramento that you're already hitting the California, northern California market? To bring this to, I guess, San Francisco, it was it would have been difficult or something? I was just kind of interested in that because I don't see any SF. Why, what do you mean why that tour didn't? San yeah, I was. I was just. It was interesting because it was Sacramento, and you know I was what? wondering. Like, I'm not. I'm not. I can't speak for for Carcass or or the booking agency because, uh, you know, obviously, as as the first act on the bill, we get offered for as is, and we take it. You know. So, yeah. So, gonna happen as far as states, but to my to the best of my knowledge, speculate that you know this just re, re sort of Slayer. And done a date up there, and I think it had probably had something to do with that. Oh, all right. Yeah, I was just interested in that, you know, because you, you know, see the, that not oversaturating the market. They had just been there, but they, but they're coming so far close. So the diehards you know, in the Bay Area can go see a, a headlining set of Carcass, or if they've had their fill, then okay, you know. I I believe that that's the reason for that. They're not trying to avoid major markets. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, I know. I'm feeling like that. It's like they, I'm sure they would want to, but like you just brought up, Carcass did come through here with Slayer. So you'd, you'd be surprised, man. With some of these big promoters, there's these radius clauses and stuff. You know, for example, I got a call last night. Even though I am in Mexico, I would have flown home immediately for this, but I got a phone call yesterday afternoon from from Pentagram asking if Night Demon wanted to support them last night. It was a last minute thing. Last night in, in Santa Ana, tonight in San Francisco, our Sacramento. And I was ready to jump on a plane. And, you know, I talked to our booking agent, and uh, they said, well, we have a radius clause because of these annual dates, which prohibits Night Demon from playing in the Bay Area for 60 days each way. So, 60 days prior to this upcoming annual show and 60 days post. Wow, I mean, so I totally that's yeah. Kind of stuff that that that's the kind of stuff that happens, you know. And unfortunately, I'd be up there tonight opening the pentagram. You know? I know, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And I'm sure yeah, it's just like you getting the contract is set up that way. And uh, you, to me, you right. know, you give great. Be, it does make sense, you know, in a certain way. You know, you don't want to oversaturate things. Yeah, but you know, as far as for us being a support band on a big tour, like it's a little bit different. Yeah. yeah so, but that's just the way it is, and that's the way it rolls. So, there's your music business 101 
lesson for today, kid. And, and honestly, Jarvis, <laughs> you know, I have to bring that up because I was somebody was I was talking with you know some people, and when it comes to you know metal bands really knowing the business, you'd be surprised how a lot of these young bands starting out they think they do, but they really don't. And when I talk with you, because you've experienced it, you know so much. It really is like getting a metal, you know, lesson, you know, metal one hundred and one, because you have the experience. Where I feel like a lot of young bands I deal with, they're just they're so they're still getting into it. You know, they're green, and you know they're they're just they think they know it, but there's still a lot to go. As I'm sure you from you know past history can oh, say, yeah. it's and, and I still learn every day. I still make mistakes, but you got to try stuff. You know. But for sure, you know, there's a lot of information out there on the internet, and there's tons of fantastic books, you know, tons of them. But, you know, the real, the real, the real life lessons come from the experience, man. You know, I mean, really, like, it just comes from trial and error, and it comes from experience, you know. So that's another lesson to all you kids out there. Trying to make it overnight, don't ever try and be an overnight success, you know. Exactly. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ups, enjoy the downs, enjoy what you can learn from it. You know, it's a process. It's like no, nothing good happens overnight for sure, you know? Like, you look at some of these bands, how long, how long it's crazy, man. It's crazy how long some of these bands have been around and doing it, you know? And you just never know. Like, you, you see things go up and down, you know? When I was when I was younger, I used to pr- I used to promote King Diamond shows, you know, and he would we would he would come out and be really cool, and there'd be two hundred people there, and that was it, you know. And and now he's like the biggest thing ever, you know. And things come in waves, but if you keep going and you stay consistent and you stay honest with what you're doing, you just don't know what can happen, you know. So I think that's the thing, and also it's the goal of you know some people want to be in this to be famous and and, and stuff like that and be rich and like. I do not recommend that. You know, I mean, that's that's definitely the wrong the wrong thinking of, of being in a band, especially a metal band. You know? Yeah. Right right now, that would probably be a really bad idea to just put all your eggs and think that you're going to become, you know, yeah. a billionaire. <laughs> We're going to be like Metallica. Sure. Okay, kids. Don't quit yeah, your day well, jobs. you know, I mean, Metallica put a lot of work in, too, you know? Yeah. They've I mean, had a team of people working around them for a long time. That's true. They've worked with the same management company since 1984. We're it's, still working with them. And it's all so, about timing I mean, and everything. You can't, you know, certain yeah. things just happen. You know what I mean? Right. It, doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, it's good to get your it's good to get your, your art exposed for sure. But the main thing is to do it because you love doing it. You know? That's very that's true. It. That's why we do it. And that's why you do it. I don't know how much money you're making at university radio. But I can imagine that. <laughs> Thank you, Jarvis, for reminding me. After the phones don't even work. After four years, where's my paycheck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> after four years of this show, being the music director for a year, where's my paycheck? Oh, it turns out I probably gave them more money. <laughs> like uh, like those vinyls I sold to oh, donate. absolutely, dude. You, you enjoying those, right? I got you, was it Trust the same? Me, I hate to even say this on the air, but try being... Try being signed to a record label. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's... Giving them way more money than they've given me. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the case? Well, Jarvis, I want to let you relax yeah, because you got a lot coming up. The Anvil Show, it's this Tuesday at the DNA Lounge. You also have Unleash the Archers. And I believe a local band is also on the bill, too, playing with everybody, right? Okay, cool, cool. I can't remember. I, I'm not sure. I feel bad. I just know it's Unleash the Archers. It's Unleash the Archers, and then Anvil, Night Demon, and then, like I said, I believe they were throwing on a local band, too, so that's always good to uh, bring out the local well, we people. We all you out there. And I think that... I that's an all-ages venue or not. It is. That's why I'm actually Great. really glad yeah, that that's hopefully this... That's our goal, this... by the way. That's our one goal, if you ask about future goals for the band. That's our, our eventually, our highest goal is to be able to be a, a popular enough band... Not to be rich or famous, but to be a band that goes on stage, you know, by 11 o'clock at night at the latest and plays all ages shows. Like, legitimate all ages shows. We're at the bar where somebody can drink, and if they can't drink, they can still enjoy the show, you know? That's our ultimate goal as a band, I would say. That's got to be, well, I got to say that's getting the top five goals of my life in this band, is to be able to play like that. And if you get to a certain level, you can play venues like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's not even, that's a, I think it's a pretty 
technical. It's not that's not like a super high level. You don't have to be Guns N' Roses to do that. You know, yeah. a carcass can do that. You know, and that's what that's what we want to do. We want to stay out of the bars. Unfortunately, it's not easy to do that when you want to play every night. You know, that's and, true. But as the popularity of the band grows, I hope to come to that and draw in some younger. You there. Curtis? Oh? I don't know if we've lost him or not, people. Rob, you there? I, I'm here. I'm here. I think you cut out there right for there. a bit. Cut out here. Yeah. But anyway, next Tuesday, everybody get your asses down to this show. If you're in the SF Bay area up here in the Sonoma County, they should probably check it out if they can. And Jarvis, I myself will try to catch you guys on stage there. It should be a fun night. Absolutely. Hit me up. We'll take care of you, Rob. All right, dude. Hey, thanks a lot for calling in, and I always will support Night Demon here because you guys, of course, the music is great. And you, just one of those most down-to-earth musicians calling on his day off. Thank you, Jarvis. <laughs> no problem, man. Sorry the connection's bad here in Mexico. but I, I understand, dude. I understand. Take it easy, dude. All right, man.